Welcome to Behind the Lines. I'm Diane Dayton. Today we're going to talk about a really cool venue that's got some great music. It's called Mickey's Black Box and it's up at Rock Lidditz. And with me right now is the Director of Events. We have Margaret Cooper. Thank you for being here, Margaret. Thank you for having me, Diane. It's great to be here. I'm so glad you're here because I'm so glad what you're doing with this. Now for those of us, let's try to understand exactly what this is. First of all, Michael Tate. Tell us about Michael. All right. So um, as some of you might be familiar, uh, Rock Lidditz was a kind of the brainchild, shall we say, of uh, Claire Global and Tate Towers, two local production companies that are known the world over. Um, Tate Towers focuses on staging and things like that. I'm not sure if you saw uh, the Super Bowl halftime performance with Rihanna. That was their, uh, their brainchild there wow. with the levitating platforms. Very cool. Um, and Claire Global actually does a lot of audio, um, pretty much most major tours um, work with them. Okay. Um, so it's very exciting what's going on there. Now, focusing on Mickey's, that's my specialty. Okay. Um, Michael Tate recently retired uh, from Tate Towers and decided, well, what do I do with my free time but create a theater in my backyard? Yes. So he built this for the community um, as an effort to support some of the lesser known, lesser supported arts while also creating a platform that is, uh, shall we say, flexible and malleable enough to welcome in even the largest of tours. Mm -hmm. We've welcomed in Yes um, from back in the uh, 70s. If yes, you're a fan I of remember that. Rock. <laughs> um, we've had Maggie Rogers. She's quite a big star right now. Um, and a couple other just really big names. But then we also have a platform where we can welcome in some smaller artists and provide them the same space that normally they wouldn't have access to um, as we have a little bit more flexibility than some of these other venues yeah. they're touring through. It's a beautiful space. I was there and got to talk with you there. I mean, it literally is that big black box, you know, <laughs> you see that. And when you go inside, I was impressed with how intimate it felt, but you said it seats 650 people, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Now it is a little bit of a caveat there. Now we seat 350 when we're in our theater mode. We have a little bit of a exciting feature of our building where our floor flies up into the ceiling and then we have chairs that come up <laughs> from the ground. So. We're a bit like a pop-up book, as I like to okay. refer to it as. Yeah. Um, so fully seated, we're at 350. Now fully, um, full admission, we're at 650. Once again, that gives us that flexibility to kind of pivot around the needs of our clients, our mm -hmm. artists, and our guests as they come through. Okay. Now you do some interesting things there, and you tie in with nonprofits too. Tell me about that. Yes. Now part of our mission statement um, at Mickey's Black Box is to not only support up and coming artists in the lesser known arts, but also to provide a space for the community to gather and celebrate and just be a community. Yeah. Um, so we've hosted uh, everything from private parties, galas, um, formal functions to nonprofit events. We're actually looking forward to welp welcoming Aaron's Acres for their mm -hmm. 25th anniversary party this summer, as well as um, we have Kathy's Circle of Friends. If you're yes. familiar with them, they are a uh, partnership with Primitives by Kathy. We're going to do an adult prom here this month. Um, so we're really just oh, looking great. forward to just being a community fixture and finding where we fit in and how yeah. we can best support that mission. And that's a community center area too, isn't it? I mean, you really can look at it that way, right? Oh, yes, yes. Now yeah. we're just uh, just up 501 past Lidditz on the other side of town, so about 20 minutes from Lancaster City. Um, although there does seem to be a big vacuum for a venue of our size in this area. We have mm -hmm. a lot of wedding venues in this region and some more formal venues of our size. We also yeah. have the convention center, which is far exceeds our capacity. <laughs> right. um, so it is kind of a nice time, especially unfortunately with Chameleon um, mm -hmm. leaving post-pandemic yeah. to kind of provide that mid-size room. We are called a club um, mm -hmm. by definition. So we are a nice club size room for artists that are going to tour through. Well, that and we've lost the village too. So That's there's right. been a lot of loss with that type yes. of venue. You have some more things that are talking about the mission. Oh, 
Oh, yes. Address those, because I think this is really interesting. Yeah, so one of the things that, of course, we are um, really focused on, and this was, I think, Michael's vision, um, Mickey, as I call him, since I've been working under his tenure at the Black Box, <laughs> um, is to connect others and to provide support in creating these events and creating what the client envisions. So one of the things we do as a Black Box is well, we're truly a black box. You can really do anything with our space. Right. Um, so we try to provide that extra, we try to go the extra mile and assist the clients with creating their event exactly as they um, would like to see it. So I've seen everything from, well, goodness gracious, today I saw a chicken wire cocoon flying through the theater. <laughs> I have seen video walls go up in a day's time. Wow. I've seen pyrotechnics and flames shooting wow. off our stage and really we can do it all. Um, so wow. That's, I guess, more on the production side, but okay. when it comes to the nonprofits, we also take that same approach. So we try to work with nonprofits on pricing, access points. Um, we try to give them as much support as possible in-house with our in-house staff and our um, technical equipment to try to support their vision. Mm -hmm. um, so we are kind of, shall we say, a blank canvas, yeah. and we provide the paint, we provide the paint brushes, and if you want to bring your own, that's fine too, and yeah. we just make masterpieces. I love that. And what I think is also very interesting that I didn't realize is that there's also food and drink available there too. So I mean, you've got whatever the show or performance is, but there's more going on. Yes, <laughs> that, is, that is true. Um, one of the things we uh, pride ourselves on, uh, for better or for worse, is we have a, a full bar on site, which is a uh, beer, <laughs> liquor, and wine. So it's nice for people to have those options, especially when you consider um, one of our jazz as nights or mm -hmm. a theatrical performance, you might want a nice glass of wine, but if you're gonna come see your favorite rock band, you might prefer something a little lighter. Sure. So we kind of run the gambit of all options. Um, we also have a small kitchen on site. Mm -hmm. um, we serve light bites, little snacks, things like that to keep the crowd going through the night. And then we also have some catering options that we can tailor to the specific needs of the guests should they be interested. Okay, that sounds really good. Is there a website with any of this? Ah, uh, yes, I'm glad you asked. Um, <laughs> so you'll find us at mickeysblackbox.com. We're also on Facebook under Mickey's Black Box and Instagram, Mickey's Black Box. Quick note for those out there, that's M-I-C-K-E-Y-S. Okay. Sometimes people yes. get a bit confused there. Um, you can find all of our updated um, calendar, our upcoming shows, uh, more information to con contact us, email, phone number, and all that good stuff, as well as some fun glamour shots of the building. Oh, that's good. That's always good to check all that out. So I think we would probably say that this is pretty an eclectic type of venue, right? I think that is a perfect adjective to describe our project. Okay. We are eclectic. We are versatile. I... <laughs> They call me the director of events. I call myself a professional pivoter um, <laughs> because we're always trying to accommodate the needs of our guests and um, see how we can make the events just what they're envisioning. Yeah. So. so if someone has an idea or a project, how do they go about making this happen with you? Uh, so essentially what we do is we field emails. We have an email form on our website uh, to request information on an event. And then either myself or uh, Jimmy Gallo, he's our general manager, will reach out to the client and we just talk one on one and say, what are you thinking of and how can we make this special? I love that because it's almost like anything, the idea will be entertained. Yes, yes. We really take pride in that. Um, really, if <laughs> this sounds so cheesy and I tell everyone this, but if you dream it, we can do it. And there it's really go. the truth of it. Um, sometimes that can be a bit intimidating for people because <laughs> it is just a big black box. Right. Um, but once the paint gets put on the canvas, it really comes together. Yeah. So when somebody has an idea, they can come to you and the whole thing gets put together, which is what our second half is going to be about because Tim came to you with a wonderful idea, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so uh, I don't want to give too much away for the second half, but to spoil it a little bit, we uh, are very, very thrilled to welcome in the five fresh takes on jazz series, um, highlighting emerging women composers in jazz. Uh, it's an absolutely fantastic series. I am so grateful that Tim brought this idea to me. Um, it's a cause near and dear to my heart as yeah. I, uh, I believe in supporting up and coming women, mm -hmm. uh, original composers. My yes. goodness gracious, I'll tell you, I stay in the office side because you don't want me playing music on that stage. <laughs> and it just blows my mind, the talent that's out there yeah. that gets glossed over, unfortunately. Right. And that's what this opportunity at Mickey's Black Box, that's the whole idea to give this opportunity for underserved. Exactly. Right. Exactly. The artists that are deserving of that stage, that are skilled, that are talented, but just need that door to be opened. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll tell you what, their, their talent has gotten them everywhere. We are 
I, I hate to say we're doing any favors because I truly believe they're doing us a favor by gracing our stage. But nonetheless, we, um, we're we happy to provide that opportunity. Yeah. Well, and, I'm glad you do. So I know there are people that want to hear about this because we've actually had a couple of the performances, but there are more coming up. So we're going to take a short break and we come back more details. Stay with us. You're watching Lancaster Community TV, LCTV 66. Welcome back to Behind the Lines. We're talking about all the great entertainment that's coming to Mickey's Black Box up at Rock Lidditz. And joining Margaret and myself is Tim McKeel. You are a jazz enthusiast. You are also the manager of Temple Avenue. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Boy, you came up with this idea and talked to Margaret about doing these young women in jazz composers. And we've had a couple of the performances already. The first one was in April. Now, who was that, Tim? Um, that was Gosha May. She's a uh, native of Poland, now living in the Netherlands, and came to Temple University to get her master's in uh, jazz studies. Okay. So what was her feel for the performance? Oh. What was it like? She's an unusually inventive composer and performer. She also has just a delightful personality. Okay. So that's um, just so much fun to see her. And she had an excellent band with her. Uh, it was a high energy uh, performance with Gosha. And what's great about this, it's giving a platform for these young women, right, Margaret? Yes, exactly. Um, one of our missions, once again, is just providing that space for up-and-coming artists to truly shine. Yeah. Um, and we are honestly thrilled to have some of these artists on our five Fresh Take series to yeah. even be gracing our stage. Absolutely. So the second one on May 7th, Tammy. Mm -hmm. Tammy wins band, the Tamu. She's a Vietnamese-American um, composer living in New York City. Uh, she got her bachelor's at Temple and then her master's from Manhattan School of Music. She's also really creative and distinctive. She takes jazz fusion, okay. which is jazz plus rock plus funk, but she also is into poetry and experimental music. Mm. So her music is really different than the other four uh, composers in this series, but you could say that about each one. Right. Each one's different right. in their own way. Uh, and it's, it's just amazing to see the creativity that, that Tammy brings to the stage. It's, it's really fun to hear also. Yeah, that's very cool. Well, what I love about it, it's five performances. So it's been April, May, we've got June coming up. You're taking off July and August, but coming back September and October. So the next performance is June what? June 11th, that's gonna be that? a trombonist named Ooh. Gina Benalcazar. This is more of a straight ahead jazz band. Okay. Um, like I said, we're, we picked these five composers because each one has a distinctive quality about, about their, uh, their work. Uh, Gina's band, uh, like I said, more of a straight ahead approach. Um, and this band also has the most local connections mm, okay. of the five. Uh, drummer and the piano player or man of township grads. All the, right. The saxophonist is a Governor Mifflin grad, Berks hmm. County. Okay. Um, so there's going, hopefully uh, folks will come out and see what those local folks are up to. Yeah. Well, we have them performances in the fall, but how did you go about coming up with this list and like eliminating and how did you even go after? Well, um, our September series uh, features Laura Sherrod. Um, now we actually welcomed her recently for one of our Thursday night jazz series. Ah, and I'll okay. be honest, I was completely blown away with her music, her 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 lyrics, her artistry, very feminist. Um, I really appreciated that about her. Um, so I approached her and I said, I love what you're doing. This is absolutely fantastic. 
Um, if I could make your songs my ringtone, I certainly would because it's just got so much soul. Um, so I had mentioned that to Tim and Tim said, I think I've got an idea here. I know quite a few ladies that have quite a few great uh, talents and oh, wow. uh, we just kind of started brainstorming and it became a series. Okay, so that's how it happened. And you've got connections all over the place with jazz, don't you, Tim? Well, I have some connections in this area. I'll go that far. Uh, that's very kind of you to say that. Um, yeah, f these are uh, artists that I've met through managing uh, my son's jazz band, which is Temple Avenue, uh, over the years, for the past 12 years. And for a long time, I've thought it would be wonderful to find a way to give these young composers a forum mm -hmm. and Margaret jumped right in with both feet. <laughs> so a huge shout out to yeah. uh, Margaret and, and Mickey's Black Box. They've yeah. been incredibly welcoming and supportive uh, and Good. bringing these, these young artists to, to Lancaster yeah. County. Sure. So the October performance, the fifth in this series. is What's the date and who is that? Uh, so that'll be October 22nd with Laura Lizcano. Now, okay. while I'm a big jazz enthusiast, I am not a professional jazz enthusiast, so I'll let Tim describe okay. the music in a little bit more technical terms. Go for it. Um, Laura is an immigrant from uh, Colombia, South America. Mm -hmm. uh, she's been in the States since she was a child. Um, she now lives in New York City. Her compositions, again, different from the other four. Uh, she is uh, a singer and composer, of course. Back usually, and as she will be at Mickey's, with a cellist and a guitarist. Okay. So it's jazz kind of folk uh, with some classical touches too. And again, different instrumentation than the other four bands in this series. It's, it's beautiful music. I think, yeah. I think audiences will love it. Yeah, this, this is a great series. Of course, I've got to throw out a little teaser. Do you think you'll continue this series at all? I think we uh, will see what we can do. But okay. if, 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 the, if the crowds are hungry for jazz, yep. well, we've got jazz. That's okay. for darn sure. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So I would imagine, too, when you were doing this, Tim, it, you're looking at a broad scope. Where did you go, I mean, seriously, to, to find some of these artists? Um, these are folks that I, who I had met just over the years, um, like I said, through managing okay. my son's band and going to hear other bands. Okay. It's just... It, it just all comes together. So why yeah. don't plug Temple Avenue while we have the uh, opportunity. You, let's tell, tell us about Temple uh, Avenue. It's a Lancaster-based band. Uh -huh. um, most of the musicians over the years have been Temple, now Temple graduates. Mm -hmm. When it started 12 years ago, they were Temple students. Okay. But Temple is a has a prestigious jazz program Absolutely. for uh, this, for the Mid-Atlantic region. Uh, it's it's fabulous, and it draws students from. I I should have said it's a nationally recognized mm -hmm. program, not just in the Mid-Atlantic area. Okay, all right. So I know there are a lot of other things that are to be coming with Mickey's Black Box. So once again, for those that might have forgotten, it's really easy. What's the website? Where do we go for this? That is mickeysblackbox.com. You can find us on Facebook under Mickey's Black Box or okay. Instagram under Mickey's Black right. Box. <laughs> so we never know what's what's going to be happening. Things are being created all the time there, right? That is true. Um, one of the things you might notice about our schedule is sometimes it looks a little, um, you look one day, it might look one way, and you look the next day, it might be double the size. Um, we're okay. always welcoming and entertaining new ideas, new yep. artists routing through, new uh, series that get presented to us, all sorts of new things um, okay. are always being put on our plate. 
Well, that's great. And I'm so glad that you're doing what you are with these young women jazz composers and throwing this out to the community so that we can see who they are. We can help support and we can educate ourselves and have a good time at the same time. So thank you both for being here and thanks for what you do in the community. It really makes a difference. Well, thank you for thanks having, for having us. us. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us today, too. I'm Diane Dayton with Behind the Lines, reminding you to look behind the lines. You might be surprised what you find.